Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net and in this lesson we'll talk about the second new layout control in the Universal Windows Platform API, the split view. And the split view allows us to create a panel that can be displayed or hidden and there's a little animation associated with it so it looks like it slides out and slides back. Uh, into view and out of view. So we would use the split view to implement that hamburger navigation style that uh, is used in Windows 10 like we saw in the previous lesson. And there are two parts to a split view. One might be optional, uh, the other is required. So the part that's hidden by default that you display, that's called the pane. The part that's already displayed and can either be overlapped or can be pushed over, that's called the content. I'm not sure that you have to have a content. It'll work, I believe, without it. But we're going to go ahead and demonstrate it with it. So what you do is you then implement or define other controls inside of the split view pane and the split view content areas uh, that make up your application. And in the split view pane, what you want to do is uh, to you know, if we were to create a real application that uh, used the hamburger navigation style, we'd have an icon and then text next to it. And we'll get to that. We'll build that in a couple lessons from now. Uh, but we're just going to start with the basics of just this component itself, uh, it, although it is a large piece of the overall puzzle to make that happen. All right, so let's start by building a split view here in my new application called Split View Example. So we're going to create a split view. And inside the split view, uh, we're going to create a pane and then a content area. And so inside the content area, we can do anything we want to do. Um, I'm going to actually just put a bunch of text blocks for all of these. Uh, we'll set the text equal to. So I'm going to create just simple text blocks in both the pane and the content area. And I'll just fill in some text so we can distinguish it. The first, second, and third text block will be in the pane. The fourth, fifth, and sixth text block will be in the content area. Now, as you can see, we get the little error that the property content can only be set once. Why? Uh, because uh, it has a content property, not a child property. We're going to use a stack panel or something else then to enclose all of our items inside of each the pane and this content area. All right. All right, and you can barely see, let's go ahead and blow this up a little bit more to like a 75%. You can see that we will by default be able to view the stack panel's pane. Uh, now, if we were to run the application, however, you see that the pane is nowhere to be found. We only see the, uh, the content area. How do we actually display the pane, well, we're going to have to first of all give our split view a name. So let's do that, my split view. And then uh, here, let's go ahead and add a, uh, a button outside of the split view and uh, call this uh, and uh, we'll set the click property. Click event rather to button.click all right and inside of here what we're going to do is work with my split view dot and we're going to set the is pane open property and we're going to set it to whatever the my split view pane property is not so you can see that we're setting it equal to the opposite of whatever it is right now by using the not operator the uh, uh, the exclamation mark all right so now let's do one more thing I'm going to change this outermost uh, item from a grid to a stack panel and then I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to save it and let's run the application 
All right, so you can see that I can display and hide that panel, very cool. Now we can control more uh, about that panel. Uh, first of all, let me change the stack panel to uh, the orientation equals horizontal, great. And what we're going to do is set the split view, uh, split views display mode. And the display mode is one of the most important uh, properties that we can set on the split view because it'll it will dictate how it how it actually operates. So there's four options here. Let's take a look at inline, and let's go ahead and run the application. And you can see whenever we click inline, it actually pushes the pane as it comes out, pushes the content over. Whereas if we were to change this to overlay, let's go ahead and run the application again. It would completely cover it up. All right. And then there's one other uh, variation on this, but we're going to have to set another property. We're going to set... Um, the compact pane length and you typically set this to a small value like 50 just enough to display an icon all right so this is 50 pixels and so we'll do overlay compact overlay so this is a variation on overlay that will display just a little crack of the uh, of what's underneath in the pane you can see we can see first second and third let's change that even to like just 10 pixels just so we can barely see it creeping out because right now it doesn't look particularly interesting all right you can just barely see like first second and third creeping through there on the very most left side and then when we click click me it, the pane covers up whatever we see in the content area so that's compact overlay. Compact inline is exactly like inline, except it shows that little compact area as well that will only be uh, 10 pixels wide. So here again, we see just a little bit of first, second, and third text block, and when we click it, it pushes everything over because it's inline. Okay. All right, we can also adjust things like, uh, like the open pane length. We can set that to, let's say, 50 pixels, for example. And now let's see how that affects our application. All right, so you can see that it really restricts the size of that pane as it opens up in this case. And we can also set the background and things of that nature. Now, here's the thing about the split view is that by itself, it really doesn't do much. You give, you're, you're given a lot of uh, latitude to build out how you want to implement your pane. In this case, I just use text blocks. They don't really make a whole lot of sense. We want to either use a button or something that's clickable so that when we click it, um, we navigate to something in the main area of our application, some feature or some different information. So again, like I said earlier, we're going to learn how to do that a couple of lessons from now. First, I think we need to learn a couple of more input controls that we can use. And once we learn about those, I can show you a very simple way to implement the hamburger navigation. So we're going to come back to this idea in another lesson or two. And so we'll see you there. Thank you.